happens this always happens I prepare in every single way I think uh, I, I, I do all the <laughs> hello Kenergy and Enchimus thank you. you you better you better love it here I or I, I'm glad you love it here. Oh, it's America Day in 20 minutes. Congratulations, burgers, on having a burger day. Um, no, 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 it's not a nice place. But I'm glad you want to stick around, Enjimus. Happy, happy to have you around. And here is your sandwich NFT. Please enjoy. And yeah. It's a good lay down time. It is 20 minutes to midnight on the only coast that matters. That's the bully. Pandas, I bet you live on the coast that doesn't matter. And if you live on the uh, the coast that um, does matter, the only coast that does matter, I bet it doesn't matter because of you. Because of you, no thanks to you. <laughs> um, but so please um, accept that. But thank you so much for the three months. I hope you're having a good night, Angelus. Uh, ready for a a pre-July fourth rest. Um. So people are not lighting fireworks today, actually, um, because it's very rainy. Hi, Moifty! Yeah! Yeah! Um, I was expecting a bunch of fireworks to go off, so to be honest, I didn't really prepare. Um, but then around nine or so, um, it started raining a lot, and it probably is, is too wet it's too moist. Lots of people hate that word, so I'm going to say it again. Moist. It's too humid. It's too wet. There's definitely going to be fireworks tomorrow, even if it's super wet, unless it's like a legit thunderstorm. And hello, Sirit. How are you doing tonight? I'm kind of excited uh, for tomorrow, actually, because I uh, was invited to a barbecue at a place that has a pool, and so it's like, yay! Yay, swimming! Yay! And uh, there's a decent uh, view of the Hudson. So, maybe I'll be able to see fireworks. You're gonna make some burgers on your stove? That sounds appropriate. That sounds seasonally appropriate, and I hope the stove burgers turn out good. You know, in restaurants, they make burgers in a pan. That's what they do. When you go to the restaurant and, and you ask for a burger, they're not doing it on a grill. 
it's like a griddle. So if it's good enough for a restaurant, the, the pan burger, then it's good enough for me. Though the charcoal flavor of like, it's a primal feeling. People like barbecues um, outdoors because it's an excuse to touch grass and it's like a very primal feeling like ooh, fire me cavemen me love fire me love heat <laughs> something good evening lore master I hope you're having a good evening mm, liquid smoke is expensive though and the smoke isn't the tastiest part, in my opinion. The tastiest part is the carcinogens. When it's super duper burned. Oh, I just realized I just forgot. I just forgot something. I just forgot something. I'm so sorry. Um, but Um, sorry about all of the clicking noises. I forgot the whole point of monetizing the stream. If you want to hear my heartbeat, you get to, to, to nine subs to go. But since Enchimus bought a big and egg and cheese, I don't know why I'm talking this way. Anyway, now is when you get a chew. So yeah, the sear. The sear is the part that contains the carcinogens, and I I enjoy like a nice burnt bit. Like if there's a bit of chicken that gets like extra karma. Huh? What was that noise? It like it. Yeah, three months too. I'm glad it sounded nice. Um. So I have the monitoring on, so I can hear my own voice. But even with the real-time feedback, it's difficult to know if the auditory stimuli is coming out the way I want it to. And you know, what's the point of a chew if you can't hear it? Or a mouth pop? Or a blowy? Wait, don't say it like that, don't say it like that. Um, or blowing into your ear? Hello, Iberinos. How are you doing today? Yeah, or a heartbeat. Just, just normal shenanigans. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's normal shenanigans. Uh. Hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just, just uh, um, trying to cling to every day of my life. Every day of my life, I'm just holding on to the very last bit of my sanity and I'm like come on S please stay please please stay you're good I need I need you to keep on keeping on you're not worried yeah please And Jonathan Toyn, uh, Jonathan Toyn, hello, yeah, just one more day. I just gotta make it through the week. 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 Hello, my least favorite crow. How are you doing today? <gasps> crow, I heard something uh, in the news that pertains to you. 
um, I might be wrong, but I heard that the Barbie movie, um, was banned in your area because there was a map, um, in the movie, and that, the way that map was drawn incited, um, some geopolitical tensions regarding everybody's favorite, um, Winnie the Pooh state. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I could be wrong. Um, you are, you are there. You are on the ground, so you could actually band cause- oh. <laughs> That's not right. Every map that's manufactured is made in China. God, okay, everything, everything we buy is made in China, mostly everything we buy, so, you know, they're gonna create the items with their geopolitical, yeah, it has the nine dash line, basically, in the movie, there was like an illustration of a map that was supposedly made by a child. And yet, yeah, 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 it had to do with the nine dash line. So, claim this for the degens? What are you claiming? Are you claiming the Barbie movie? I want to see it. Oh, that's what you wanted. Ada, Ada. Is that good enough? Was that degenerate enough? Oh, hello, Nemo. You came in when I was trying to sound like a fucking degenerate. Welcome in. <laughs> They've banned Oppenheim. That's another, um, move. Movie. Movie. Movies. We're talking about your least favorite thing, Nemo. Movies. Um, and also, hello, the double ooh ooh. I hope you can get nice sleepy. I know it's very late in your area. Some buddies went to AX and. Okay, um, the crowds? Hello, Slime Mulder. Welcome in. Um, I've been in crowds like that at New York Comic Con. It's not fun. It, it's, it's horrible. Crowds like that, um, is why literally every year I go to a convention. I go, mm, not next year. Not next year. Fuck this shit. I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back next year. And then the next year I, co I, I go back because I, I, I want to hang out with all the nerds. Yeah, it's a fancy bud. It's a bud that looks like Hinamori Luna. Um, or, or, na. Um, I, I'm in an idle kind of mood. Uh, because last night I was able to catch the, um, Hollow End concert. Also, hello, Soviet. Welcome in. And that was... It, it, Whenever I see, um, one of the hollow concerts, I- I go like, ah, fucking, ah, yeah, let's go, let's go, I love, I love idols, I go, ah. Um, and it is fun. I mean, it did, it did its job at being hollow live propaganda. Or, or whatever. Um, it was a good show. It was a really good show. And, and, and I saw, and I saw Bay, and I was like, Oh, fucking Red has so many good moves. Ah. Um, and, um, Sweaty, sweaty hands, sweaty plastic, sweaty, 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 sweaty. 
Um, from all the shouting, it sounded like they were trying to keep the crowds moving quickly. If they slow down, nobody's going to move at all. Any time. Ever. You, you gotta keep moving. It, it doesn't matter if you, like, lose people in in the sauce. You, 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 keep, you have to keep moving. Uh, you can regroup eventually, and it's fine. You'll be fine. It's just people. It's not like you can ever get trampled to death by people or anything. It's not like the sheer force of hundreds of bodies convulsing together can crush you and everything you hold dear. And hello, Yoshi. It might be embarrassing to die at a con, but if you're to perish, yeah, be with your brothers. You die. You die like a man in the trenches, rather than a dog at your desk. Or something like that. And Janice, you would be crushed by a stampede of, um, of, of, of anime fans getting into the studio trigger panel, only for them to announce the same thing that they announced a year ago. Um... I am happy for panty stocking, though. If people got trampled to death at a con, more people would go. Yeah, there's more room. There's more room for people to walk around now that... Ooh, that's dark. Oh, that's really dark. That's super duper dark. It's very, 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 very dark. Mm, hello, Mighty Cheeto. Um... We can yay, hold hands and get crushed by the oncoming force of Weeboos. There is indeed um, more panty stocking coming. Um, so, da, 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 da. Uh, last year, Studio Trigger announced, "Hey, we're making more. We're making a season two of panty stocking." So I've got like a scratchy, I've got like a sponge with two sides. There's like a soft side that's not super soft. And there's like a scrubby side that's not super scrubby. But you know, it sounds, if it sounds horrible, let me know. 1,523 anime fans trample. It's not the father, actually. It's the mother. Um... The father is, um, very, very worn out. Uh, I used the father as, um, as, like, a stress thing, and, like, the microplastics come up, come off constantly. Um, and... And so it's like, oh, let's, uh, let's see how a mother sounds. And it's got two textures for different, different audio things. I deliver. A, I'm sorry to give you upsetting news, but isn't every time you talk to me extremely upsetting? Ah, <laughs> uh, they are making dungeon meshy. And I'm very excited for that. Um, I haven't read that much of the manga. I feel like I read like the first five chapters, and and I read it, and I was like, yeah, this is great. I love it. Um, and and then I just kind of stopped reading manga for a while. Um, I need to catch up with Chainsaw Man, and I need to catch up with Oshinoko, but that's the only manga that I've read recently. Both are very good, and I recommend it. And I also recommend Dungeon Meshi if you... Ooh, who would I recommend it to? People who like food? It, it, it's a good, it's a good cooking manga. It's a really good cooking manga. It's just a good manga overall. I'd recommend it to everybody. Like, I'd recommend it to my brother. I think my brother would be into Dungeon Meshi, because cause it's not it's not typical. It feel in the way the artist um, draws everybody. Every character looks extremely distinct and has like a unique profile and silhouette and a lot of thought 
has been given to the character designs. Hello, Nano. And hello, Manuel. I hope you're doing good tonight. And if you're not doing well, come and get comfy. Because we're going to be doing some reading after I stop going up, 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 So, yeah, Dungeon Meshi. Dungeon Meshi is going to be a good show, and I'm very excited for it. Rain time, rain time. There's no rain. There is, um, waves, like ocean waves. If that's too loud, if that's too quiet, let me know. Um, oh, rain code came out. Oh, I want to play rain code super badly, and I want to play it soon because I'm afraid of getting spoiled by accident, but, um... Uh, it, it's like a $60 game. I'm gonna have to wait. I'm gonna wait. I'll wait until August, maybe? I don't know. Um, but it's a visual novel. I, I don't know what it is, actually. I just know it's by Danganronpa guy, and it's a mystery, and there's some good-looking character designs, and, um... It looks like... It reminds me more of I, the Somnium Files than Danganronpa, but that's a good thing. That is definitely good. Yeah! Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna go on sale soon, but whenever it, whenever it is on sale, I'll probably grab it. You're reading Dungeon Meshi yourself, and you like that the characters don't have main character syndrome. Like, it's more of an ensemble cast. Like, everybody gets their chance to shine in in the show. Not in the show, in the manga. Um, also, hello, Brace. Welcome in. Um, I have seen... Also, I don't know if I said hello to you, Hersomaniac, but hello. I have seen the trailer for the Suicide Squad Isekai. Um, so that's being written by um, the writer for ReZero. He's written some other shows recently, I think. Hmm. It will probably be pretty. If anything else, I bet DC put the money for it to be a good looking show. And I'll probably watch it because it's a good looking show. But I'm not really hopeful. I'm also very bored of Isekai in general. Hi Daedric. How are you doing? I'm very bored of Isekai. And you probably are too. Everybody goes to the same starting town, and they do the same things. Tun true. When I was younger, and looked on like, was on like DeviantArt and stuff, I saved a lot of fan art that I liked, even if I didn't necessarily, like, belong to the fandom of, uh, of that thing. Hello, Liquid Tendril. Welcome in. So, even if I didn't belong to the fandom or care about the characters or whatever, I'd save fan art that I thought looked good, and my teenage mind thought it just saved a lot of like ship art for some reason so I have like a lot of Harley Quinn and Joker 
it's probably gone now. It was like on an older PC. Um, I had like a lot of South Park too, and I like to see Japanese interpretations or anime style interpretations of Western uh, IPs. Actually, the the Joker looks kind of cool. I like how um, it's makeup. His smile is like a big makeup thing. I haven't seen Uncle from Another World. The name scares me. The name scares me. You've been getting it, giving it a pass. My home hero has been a winner the last series. It's a normie suspense in anime. <laughs> um, I really liked Descendants of a Bookworm. And I really liked... I forget what it was called. I think it was My Next Life as a Villainess. Where this girl was isekai'd into... Um, a visual novel. Um, I watched Mushi Mushishi's like the guy that's wandering around, uh, and he's like the doctor. He go the the opening. I walked a thousand miles, a thousand miles to see you, and I forgot the lyrics to this song. Welcome and gorgeous. I hope I'm thinking of the right show. I forget why I sang it. I think it was Singing March. I think during Singing March, I recorded a cover of that. It was like TV size. But I, um, I, I never uploaded it, like, I, I think I just didn't up, um, edit it, like, and, and then I, I kind of fell off seeing March, and I wish I did more, but also that whole month, like, my throat was hurting. Um, it's, Mushishi's one of the, I want to say it's like old A core, like, if, it was, or if you were an anime fan in 2009, you, you and you were like a hipster bitch, you, you watched that show. It was a good, it's a good show. It's a really good show. It has such good atmosphere. I, lo I love it. Um, Uncle from Another World is a comedy about a guy whose uncle is from a coma. Oh, it's a reverse isekai. Oh, okay, that's actually more interesting. It does have really good art. And Dream Landing, welcome in. I hope you're having a good evening. What you saw is depression comedy. I don't watch the anime to get depressed. I watch it to... Hmm... There were like phases of of my anime watching life, I guess. Like like obviously when you're a kid you watch kid stuff like Pokemon and whatever. Um and then like I guess I had like a big Fujo like Inuyasha Full Metal Alchemist phase when when like early teen and then um later on, I was like, okay, I'm cool and artsy. I like artsy things. I am pretentious. True. The Fujo phase technically never ended. <laughs> but like the, 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 like just shipping things stupidly, nonsensically. Um... So during my artsy phase, I watched everything that Shaft put out, um, and except for Monogatari for some reason, I, I bounced off of that. Um, even though I watched some of the less good ones that Shaft put out, 
I don't know. Um, and then I stopped watching anime for a long time. Um, and then life was sad and I would spend my dinner watching um, cute girls doing cute things. Like I specifically remember watching like New Game or this was when the original, um, the first season of Maid Dragon came out. So I watched like a lot of Moe Blob. Ursa Yatsura, oh they've been, that's a really good show. That's a, that's a really fucking good show. The, it moves at a really fast pace and I love, um, I love the art style. I love how colorful it is. It's very Looney Tooney, like, like car, there's a lot of cartoon logic in Ursa Yatsura. And, um, and Koki voices someone, um, um, Southside gang leader, um, Koki voices a character in the dub of Ursa Yatsura. That's the fucking coolest shit. That's the coolest fucking shit. Um, he avoided saying Moe Blob, um... Yeah! Koki's a great Kamiyoshi to have. <laughs> she 100% fits the role. I... It, it, it's like... It's wild. I mean... You know, if you make... Friend... I know... I don't like... Know them, but like, it's like, oh yeah, I know people who know, like, Kira Buckland, or, or just like... The English... In not famous, but you know, internet famous, niche internet subculture, internet VA famous, um, but, but this, <laughs> wow, this is the first time I've known a famous person, wow, wow, um, um, so yeah, um, I spent a long time uh, watching Moe Blobs uh, to to not feel so sad. <laughs> but uh, there's a word for it: healing. There, there's a word for a show that heals you. Uh, Kemomo sends, yeah. Kemomo Friends is a really good one for that. Um, I never watched it, but a friend of mine would would just like watch a lot of Senko-san, and Senko-san is exactly like girl girl takes care of you. Any girl takes care of you anime is the apex of that. You wanted to be a VA in college. You can still do it. There's no reason to not do it. It's never too late. <laughs> that might be my copium. <laughs> that might be my copium. It's never too late to give up on your dreams. Just be realistic about him. Corpse, 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 corpse. Hello, Suzuki. Hello, Jimmy Map. Hello, Attenborough. Hello, Linkbed. Hello, Cheeks VT. Let me um, give a shout out. I'm gonna be typing S O Cor Corpse C H and then shout out. Corpse. C H. What is Crystal Project? I am not aware what that is. Yeah! I always do ASMR late because it's the sleepy time. It's 
it's the sleepy time. Please, please come, come by and hang out for sleeping time. Um, Suhuki, thank you for the follow. You are my favorite customer. Um, but yeah, it's the sleepy hour hours, and I'm going to be reading um, Treasure Island because that's fun and summery and maybe it won't take a super long time to get through it? Maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe. But it's always nice to catch you around, corpse. If you need to do any post-stream self-care, like drinking water or eating food or or um rolling around in your grave or <laughs> corpse self care rolling seriously in your coffin as uh, uh, as pallbearers do do some weird shit pallbearers are on some weird shit and you're rolling around like hmm hmm that's certainly a hmm hmm If you don't already follow Corpse, please give them a follow. <laughs> the sound, the sound of you just, just, just rolling in frustration. <laughs> Maybe it, it's audible <laughs> from, from however far away I am to you. <laughs> Silly image. I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly, Lord Master. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna laugh so much. I'm not I'm not gonna make fucking lose it. I'm not gonna make fucking lose it. I am going to make fucking keep it together. Um So if you don't follow court please do. And, um, and Paul Bears, I hope you're ready to get comfy. I hope you want to, you know, you're ready for bedtime, as it is now, 12.16, on the Ghost That Matters. Um, oh yeah, what's a crystal project? Unless... I, I can I can find out for myself later. Um, I also want to check out. Uh, I I I just always want to play. What's the new game? I want to play the new game. I don't want to play old game. I want new game. I want the new hotness. Um, and I want to see what uh, FF sixteen is about. Um, but there is a demo, and I might do that. For it is overrated, you're right. It's an indie RPG in the style of Final Fantasy. Okay, okay. I definitely leave, um, not leave. I, be I believe more in an indie studio to like pick up the torch of like old Final Fantasy than I do, um, Squeenix to, to make something that feels like an old Final Fantasy, but I'm glad you're enjoying that. Saving money is, is the OP way to do it. A bunch of content just give you a proper effect. Um, is that the one with Titus? And would the prequel have more Titus? Maybe. I think. I, I'm really bad at, at Roman numbers. I think X is 10 though. Um, okay, cool. 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 I'm also bad at remembering which Final Fantasy has which stuff in it. Like, um... 
Hmm. What happens in what? It would be about checked Aron and Yuna's. Oh, oh. Hello, Nutelia. Hi ho. Hi ho, hi ho. I'm whispering. Oh, video games. Video game. Oh, you said why, not not what. I, I misread that as what. Yeah, it's ASMR. And if me being right here is too much for you, I totally understand. But if you're ready to get comfy, then you better fucking get comfy, okay? Did you brush your teeth tonight? It's the evening. I know you can't smell my breath, but I did put the minty toothpaste and I went wait I wonder how that would sound actually would that would that sound good or would it sound horrible I'm really curious actually wait 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 no shut the fuck up Sylvia why would you assume that actually my gums are really sensitive, so I actually kind of dislike brushing my teeth, um, so I tend to use mouthwash more than I brush my teeth, and I know that's not good, that's a, that's a, that's not good, I should stop being such a baby, and I should just brush my teeth, um, I'll be right back, I'm gonna go grab my toothbrush, I'm gonna do an experiment, um, don't worry if my body ceases to move. Was I possessed? Did I look possessed, Nelson? Did I look possessed by the creature of dental hygiene? I... The spirit... The spirit of dental hygiene is... Is, is living... Is living in my teeth. <laughs> um... Alright, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna do a weird thing. I'm gonna do a weird thing. I'm gonna do a weird thing. No, Starchy, I'm just brushing my teeth. The, the, the part of the stream where I brush my teeth. Um, I wasn't, I mean, yes, I was brushing my teeth, but there wasn't any toothpaste on it because then I'd have to spit it out. Instead, it was just like, 
Um, hey there, Therapy Mister, and hello, um, Severine, and hello, Starchy, and, um, and yeah, I don't think I said hello to Nelson. Um, dental hygiene is very important. Spitting, okay, I, I need something to spit into, though. I guess I could spit into this. Alright, alright, this is gonna be pretty weird, weird too. Okay, Manuel. Um, this is gonna be weird. I, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna spit on you. Please, please don't be weird about it. Please, please don't be weird. <laughs> I'm really bad at spitting. I just, 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 just get accused of it, it didn't get into the little container, it just kind of got on my chest. <laughs> no. I, I did it to myself. 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 <laughs> Is it, are you sure? Are you sure it's one of a kind scuff? Are you sure you couldn't get this kind of scuff with anybody else? Exclusive scuff. One of a kind scuff. Limited edition scuff. Scuff it is selling out. Scuff is in demand. The age of scuff is in demand. <laughs> We've all spit on ourselves. Okay, um, yeah, holographic foil scuff. SSR scuff. Super mega ultra rare scuff. Uh, this ain't no pity rate scuff. This is full-fledged. I feel like if, if scuff was a gotcha, it, it, I, you'd, you'd get it like 5% of the time. Or, or higher. It'd be a high rate. I, it's not SSR, it's like... It's, anyway. Um. My mom was always like, don't spit. That's rude. You, you shouldn't spit. It's very unladylike to spit. So, so don't do it. So, whenever I, I need to hock a loogie, I, I, I just don't. I just, I just kind of swallow it. They say that spitters are quitters. And I ain't no quitter. Um, that being said, that's my cope. That's my excuse for not being good at spitting. Yeah, rude is cool. Rude, rude boy. No, shut the fuck up. Uh, I did it to myself. 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 Not every hole. Just like the Minecraft hole. That's more... forget what we were talking about before I said brushing teeth. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! What is your nightly ritual? Because before you're ready to sleep, you have some responsibilities to take care of. 
Arizona, little Arizona, Arizona cuties fan. Hello, and hello, Kernus playing guy. Hello, hello. Um, you're playing a zombie game now, and the dragging sounds are making you paranoid. Hmm. Hmm. I want to torture. I want to torture you more than. I want to drag it extremely slowly so that it might be coming to get you. Um, <sighs> Starchy, literally all I do is soldier girl failure. <laughs> I don't want to like sound like too pathetic. <laughs> cool and aloof and 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 uh, and weird and unapproachable and and not frazzled by everything at all <sighs> it's okay it's okay it's okay as long as I'm a funny failure if you can get some entertainment out of my failure, I'll be happy. Cause what good is a clown that doesn't laugh at themselves? That is a true failure. A real a million percent failure. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um if you're comfy, if you're comfy right now, stop it. Stop it. Okay. Do you have to wake up tomorrow? I bet you do have to wake up tomorrow. You're not dying tonight. You're not dying on my watch. So set your alarm. It doesn't have to be early. Most people have off. But maybe set it to like... An hour later, you know, 10, 11, yes, Rusho, cancel the comfy vibe right now. Or maybe you have to set the coffee machine to go off, you know, you program it to go off at a certain time so that you can wake up to the smell of coffee. Maybe you need to do that. If I stop watching you die, you cease to exist. When you stop watching, you cease to exist. This is the liminal space, and you only exist right now, right here. See you later, Soviet. <laughs> you got nothing to do tomorrow? Okay. Okay, then. I'm just encouraging you to be responsible and functional. You don't have to be that. But what if somebody does? At least one bud might need to wake up tomorrow. What else do you need to do? Make sure if you have any nighttime meds, you got it sorted out. You took your meds. I might disappear. I might disappear if you take your meds. But I promise it's for the better. And... What else? Maybe set the air conditioning on a timer. Or the heater on a timer. So that it won't take up that much electricity. Oh, overnight. Um, actually, wait, if it's overnight, then the heater, yeah, get a plug for your dryer with your grandpa. Plug for your dryer? Are you drying your hair? Hair dryer. You know, I always let my hair air dry. I never really bothered with a blow dryer. I don't like it. 
Because when I blow dry my hair, I get all sweaty. And then the hair is wet. Oh yeah, clothes dryer. Clothes dryer. Go dry your clothes. Go do that. What other nonsense do you gotta do? You gotta brush your teeth. You gotta do skincare. Clean your face. Keep it free from all the extra oils. Keep it a little oily, a little moisturized. But when you rub your face, like I'm rubbing you right now. Skincare feels nice. It's like you're giving your face a little, little massage -y. And then, lie back. <laughs> it ain't kosher. It ain't kosher to, to touch that much, maybe. Lie back and let your shoulders relax. I want you to think about how high up they are, how close they are to your ears, and try to let it fall and let all the muscles from the tippy top to you of your head moving down through your neck and shoulders and back down to your stomach and your hips and your legs and feet into your toes every bit is going to relax and chill and enjoy story time because it's story time and you're going to have a nice and restful sleep and you'll be able to take on all the barbecues and social gatherings tomorrow Kuro, your bully is that is that you don't get to go to sleep right now. I might be doing this, but it's not for you. You don't get to. And you have to stay up. You have to live with your brain on. Oh shit, I should have I should have said I should have said, hey, go go bathroom. Go 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 bathroom before you lay down. Whoops. That that's a big one. That's a big one. And thank you for the water. Thank you. Water is important. It's important when you're doing a lot of voice work to drink as much water as possible so that you don't strain yourself. Chapter 8, I'm pretty certain. Was I at chapter 8? Or... Yeah. <sighs> huh. I'm not tired. Um, throat hurty 
is on and off. Right now, I'm fine. Um, but, it, you know, it, it just... How do I explain? Like, it, it's, it's good now. It's good now. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I stream to the point where my throat hurty. And then I'm like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll take a break. I'll take a break. But I haven't streamed since uh, Saturday. Or was it Friday? No, it was Friday. Friday was the last stream I did. And that one I didn't really talk a lot. Um, there were so many people. Whenever there's like a really big collab, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. I want to take great care. And be normal. And not, you know... No, I'm not tired, I'm not tired, I'm not tired. Okay. We are on chapter... No, t what? What? No, what? God damn it. God fucking damn it. I'm ruined. I'm completely ruined. I'm super ruined. I'm, I'm, I'm super duper ruined. Earlier today, uh, hello sir Ryu, earlier today, a friend of mine showed me some art of a character that they like, um, it was like, really good fan art, and, and I was like, wow, that fan art's really good, I think, uh, cause they were asking like, what's a better wallpaper? I'm like, I think this one is a better wallpaper, but in both of the pictures, like, it wasn't the focus. It definitely wasn't the focus. Like, everything was rendered with, like, equally loving detail. Like, there were a lot of, um... This is a really pretty picture. And, and I was like, oh, God damn it! why did I notice that? Why, why did I, why did I notice that? Um, it was one of the hollow stars, actually. <laughs> uh, and so, I'm, I'm like, why, why, why did they render it like that? They gave them nail polish and everything. You gotta be places. You got you got so many places to be, Scourageous. Wow. Fun fun traveling. <laughs> Thank you for keeping a counter. Maybe we'll get to ten, one for each toe. <laughs> Soiled it. Soiled it. Soiled. normal. I'm normal. I'm super normal. I'm super normal. I'm super normal. And I haven't been, um, corrupted in any way. I haven't gone on a long, uh, corruption arc. Anyway, I'm going to crack my knuckles. I'm like, Sonic, I'm, I am knuckles. I'm gonna crack my knuckles. Ooh. Uh, that was very good. That was good crack. That's good, crackalacka. Okay. I 
hate you. I hate you. Stop that. I hate you. <laughs> no. I will not. If there's a new south side thing, I'm not going to have it be that. It's going to be it's going to be something else. And, and question. Uh, I want to say the one that's next to the big toe is it it's like the middle finger but for your toes and like it's longer than the other ones. Oh my god. The hollow star that was showing toes is now live on Twitch. What the fuck? Oh, he's playing Valorant again. Cease. Do not play. I do. I will not watch Valorant. Yeah, the pointy one. The pointy one. The. God damn it! I keep falling for it. I keep falling for it. The um. The tiniest one is actually. Like, a lot of your balance hinges on that. Um, like, I think you could lose... You can't lose your big toe. And you also can't lose the two on the end. But, like, the middle ones, like, you could function pretty normally without. Because, you know, you want to you wanna be balanced, you want to be in equilibrium, you want to be able to change directions easily, you want to walk, you want to, you want to walk, you want to walk. Alright, alright, alright. At the sign of the spyglass, chapter 8. We're, we're reading now. We're reading now. We're reading now. No more, um... It, wah! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scourageous. That's very kind of you. Um, make sure you're taking care of yourself first, okay? You might be terrible with money, and I appreciate it greatly, but please make sure you're able to survive and function and have a treat and thank you thank you for giving the treat that is ad free viewing and emotes to Lord Master Andrew uh, thank you thank you thank you but I, I don't I don't someone made a Twitter post actually um, where it was, do you hate gifts, or were you told, um, what was it? Were you told constantly how expensive it is to raise you, and therefore you feel like, like, like raising a child is a lot of fucking money. Um, so... I don't, uh, I don't want to dig up the Twitter post, but it was, it was somebody's post that got, like, traction, and, and I felt very called out by it. Ooh. But, I need to give you what you paid for. Um, 
Your job is the trap. All the fun traveling. All the fun... Well, it's not necessarily fun. If it's for work, it's not necessarily fun. But you'll be able to eat Chicago food. And where else did you say you were going? Yeah, Minneapolis food and Montana food. I don't know what they eat in Montana. I'm assuming it's not Hannah's. Not no 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 Hannah's were eaten in Montana. <laughs> but, 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 but because of that, because because you did it on the special ASMR day, I'm gonna I'm gonna be be embarrassed and do a. Okay. Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. When I had done breakfasting, the squire gave me a note addressed to John Silver at the sign of the spyglass and told me. I should easily find the place by following the line of docks and keeping a bright lookout for a little tavern with large brass telescope for a sign. I set off, overjoyed at this opportunity to see more of the ships and seamen, and picked my way among the great crowd of people and carts and bales, for the dock was now at its busiest, until I found the tavern in question. It was a bright enough little place of entertainment. The sign was newly painted. No, no, totally not. No, no. -uh. The windows had neat red curtains. The floor was clearly sanded. Ram! Hi, Ram! Um, there was a street on each side and an open door on both, which made the large, low room pretty clear to see in, in spite of clouds of tobacco smoke. The customers were mostly seafaring men, and they talked so loudly that I hung at the door, almost afraid to enter. While I was waiting, a man came out of a side room, and at a glance I was sure he must be Long John. His left leg was cut off close by the hip, and under he left. Under the left shoulder he carried a crutch, which he managed with wonderful dexterity hopping about until upon it like a bird. He was very tall and strong, with a face as big as a ham, plain and pale, but intelligent and smiling. Indeed, he seemed in the most cheerful spirits, whistling as he moved about among the tables with a merry word or a slap on the shoulder for the more favored of his guests. Reading time is going well. Thank you, Ram. And welcome back, Soviet. Now, to tell you the truth, from the very first mention of Long John in Squire Tyrellney's letter, I had taken a fear in my mind that he might proved to be the very one-legged sailor whom I had watched for so long at the old Benbow. But one look at the man before me was enough. I had seen the captain and the black dog and the blind man Pew, and I thought I knew what a buccaneer was like. A very different creature, according to me, from this clean and pleasant-tempered landlord. I plucked up 
courage at once and crossed the threshold and walked right up to where he stood, propped on his crutch, talking to a customer. Mr. Silver, sir, I asked, holding on out the note. Yes, my lad, said he. Such is my name, to be sure, and who may you be? And then he saw the squire's letter. He seemed to me to give something almost like a start. Oh, said he, quite loud, and offering his hand, I see you are our new cabin boy. Pleased I am to see you. Hello, Donut Joes. And he took my hand from his large, firm grasp. Just then, one of the customers at the far side suddenly rose suddenly and made for the door. It was close by him, and he was out in the street in a moment, but in but his hurry had attracted my notice, and I recognized him at a glance. It was the tallow-faced man wanting two fingers who had come first to Admiral Benbow. Oh, I cried. Stop him. It's Black Dog. I don't care two coppers who he is, cried Silver. But he hasn't paid his score, Harry. Run and catch him. One of the others, who was nearest the door, leaped up and started in pursuit, relinquishing my hand. Who did you say he was? he asked. Black what? Dog, sir, said I. Has Mr. Trelawney not told you of the buccaneers? He was one of them. So, cried Silver, in my house, Ben, run and helped Harry. One of those swabs, was he? Was that you drinking again with him, Morgan? Step up here. The man whom he called Morgan, an old gray-haired, mahogany-faced sailor, came forward, pretty sheepishly, rolling his quid. Now, Morgan, said Long John very sternly, you never clapped your eyes on that black, black dog before, did you now? No, sir, said Morgan with a salute. You didn't know his name, did you? No, sir. By the powers, Tom Morgan, it's as, it's as good for you, exclaimed the landlord. If you had been mixed up with the like of that, you would never have put another foot in my house. You may lay to that, and what was he saying to you? I don't rightly know, sir, asked Morgan. Do you call that a head on your shoulders, or a blessed dead eye? cried Long John. Don't rightly know, don't you? Perhaps you don't happen to rightly know who you was speaking to, perhaps? Come now. What was he jawing badges, captain ships? Pipe up. What was it? He was talking of Keel hauling, answered Morgan. Keel hauling, was you? And a mighty suitable thing, too. You may lay to that. Get back to your place for a lubber, Tom. And then, as Morgan rolled back to his seat, Silver added to me in a confidential whisper. That was very flattering, as I thought. He's Quite an honest man, Tom Morgan. Only stupid, you know? He ran on again aloud. Let's see. Black Dog. No, I don't know the name, not yet. I kind of think I... Yes, I've seen that swab. He used to come down here with a blind beggar he used to. That's that he did, you may be sure, said I. I knew the blind man, too. His name was Pew. It was, cried Silver. 
now quite excited. Pew. That were his name for certain. Ah, he looked a shark, he did. If we run down this black dog now, there'll be news for Captain Trelawney. Ben's a good runner. Few seamen run better than Ben. He should run him down, hand over hand, by the powers he talked of keel hauling, did he? I'll keel haul him. All the time he was jerking out these phrases, he was stumping up and down the tavern on his crutch, slapping tables with his hand giving such a show of excitement as would have convinced an old Bailey judge or a bow street runner. My sus suspicions had been thoroughly reawakened on finding Black Dog at the spyglass, and I watched the cook narrowly, but he was too deep and too ready and too clever for me, and by the time the two men had come back out of breath and confessed that they'd lost track in a crowd, and had been scolded like thieves, I would have gone bail for the innocence of Long John Silver. Hello, Scramble. I hope you're having a good evening tonight. Please enjoy my game and the sleigh. Listen very carefully. This will all be on the pirate test of how to pirate properly for proper pirating technique. See here now, Hoggins, said he. Here's a blessed hard thing, a man like me now, ain't it? There's Captain Trelawney. What's he to think? Here I have this confounded son of a Dutchman sitting in my own house, drinking of my own rum. Here you he comes to tell me of it plain, and here I let him give us all the slip before my blessed deadlights. Now Hawkins, you do me justice, but the captain, you're a lad now, but you're as smart as paint. I see when you first come in now, here it is. What could I do with this old timber I hobble on when I was an A.B. master mariner? I'd have come up alongside him, hand over hand, and broached him to in place of old shakes. I would but now. And then all of a sudden he stopped. His jaw dropped as though he had remembered something. The score, he burst out. Three goes a rum. Why, shiver me timbers, if I hadn't forgotten my score. And falling on a bench, he laughed until the Tears ran down his cheeks. I could not help joining, and we laughed together, peal after peal, until the tavern rang again. Why, what a precious old sea cap I am, he said, at last wiping his cheek. You and me should get on well, Hawkins, or I'll take my Davy. I should be rated ship's boy, but come now, stand by to go about, this won't do, duty is duty, messmates, and I'll put my old cockerel hat and step along of you to Captain Trelawney and report this hereafter, for mind you, it's serious, young Hawkins, and neither you nor me's come out of it with what I should make so bold as to call credit. Nor you neither, says you, not smart, none of the pair of us smart. But dash my buttons, that was a good un about my score. 
and he began to laugh again, and just so heartily, that I did not see the joke as he did. I was again obliged to join him in his mirth. On our little walk along the quays, he made himself the most interesting companion, telling me about the different ships that we passed by, their rig, tonnage, and nationality, explaining the work that was going forward, how one was discharging and taking in cargo, and a third making ready for sea, and every now and then telling me some little anecdote of ships or seamen, in repeating a nautical phrase till I had learned it perfectly. I began to see that here was one of the best possible shipmates. When we got to the inn, the squire and Dr. Lipsy were seated together, finishing a quart of ale with a toast in it, before they should go abroad. The schooner, on a visit of inspection, Long John told the story from first to last, with a great deal of spirit and the most perfect truth, and that was how it were now, weren't it? He would say now again, I could always bear him entirely out. The two gentlemen regretted that black dog had got away, but we all agreed there was nothing to be done, and after he had been complimented, Long John took up his crutch and departed. All hands aboard by four this afternoon, shouted the squire after him. Aye, aye, sir, cried the cook in the passage. Well, squire, said Dr. Lipsy, I don't put much faith in your discoveries as a general thing, but I will say this. John Silver suits me. A man's a perfect trump declared the squire. And now, added the doctor, Jim may come on board with us, may he not? To be sure he may, says the squire. Take your hat, Hawkins, and we'll see the ship. And that's chapter eight. Kernas, you can request something, but I can also t t deny the... I won't, I won't lick your ear. I won't lick your ear. Um, but if you want me to say like a word, or like tap in a certain pattern, you can indeed request it. Nail tapping is very acceptable. My nails are kind of short. Um, hmm. So, Am I tapping, like, the top of my nail? <sighs> my nails are so short! I... Uh, I don't know if I'm doing it correctly. Okay. Because... If, um... Tapping the mic with my nails. It's kind of like a drum sound. Though it's more tapping with my fingers. You're not a pan, so you'd never ask for that. Yay! It sounds good. Yay! I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm sorry for assuming, but many people who come for who attend ASMR want, want want the wet noises they want the the wet the wet sound let me let me tap on this ear that I don't say anymore. Like, I'll say that it's difficult. One, two, one, two. A tap
task that I'm doing is difficult rather than hard or attend rather than come or what other silly words shipmate as opposed to semen there's lots there's all sorts all sorts of things that you could say I wish my nails weren't so short I did paint them though the texture the sound of the nail tapping might be different than it typically would because my fingers are painted um if you watched the um, dinner stream I did last week, there was like a hand cam, and I painted it for that reason. And it's red and yellow because last week everybody was thinking about McDonald's because of the horrible Grimace Shake meme. So, yeah. Your bully is I'm scratching you. I'm scratching you. I'm scratching you. I'm scratching. I'm using I'm using my tiny nails. My my t my short fingernails that I like to keep trim. And it's like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hate, I, I do hate capitalism. That's why the fact that the meme me You're bullying me now. You're bullying me saying that I can do a better. I'm not tired. Mmm. Mmm. You're, you're super prone to capitalism. You are, you are named Soviet, but, but the capitalism's coming for you. You're not immune. You'll never be immune. You're less immune than I am. You, you can't escape. It's coming for you. It's coming for you. It's coming. Wait, wait, I shouldn't say that. Um, it's rushing towards you. It's approaching your area. It's... There's no escape. There's no escape, there's no escape, there's no escape. You can't leave. You can't escape. You can't escape, I got you. That <laughs> stopped being, being bully and started being more like... Normal weird. <laughs> just, just, just weird, weird. I'm gonna stretch and drink some water and let's do chapter 9 Chapter 9 uh, Thank you for the water You can feel free to request a trigger We'll quest. Why did I say that? We'll quest. I drink some water and now I'm thinking. Fuel for we to request an air some more twigger wet when it time. I might not be able to do it, but if I am able to do it, then then I will happily oblige. <laughs> Um, yeah, e. Yeah. The Hispaniola lay some way out, and we went under the figureheads and round the sterns of many other ships, and their cables sometimes grated underneath our keel, and sometimes swung above us. At last, however, we got 
alongside and were met and saluted as we stepped aboard by the mate. Mr. Arrow, a brown old sailor with earrings in his ear and a squint, he and the squire were very thick and friendly, but I soon observed that things were not the same between Mr. Tolani and the captain. The last was a sharp-looking man who seemed angry with everything on board, and was soon to tell us why, for he, we had hardly gone down into the cabin when a sailor followed us. Captain Smollett, sir, axing to speak with you, said he. I am always at the captain's orders. Show him in, said the squire. The captain, who was close behind his messenger, entered at once and shut the door behind him. Well, Captain Smollett, what have you have to say? Ah, well, I hope all ship shape and seaworthy. Well, sir, said the captain, better speak plain, I believe, even at risk of offense. I don't like this cruise. I don't like the men. I don't like my officer. That's short and sweet. Perhaps, sir, you don't like the ship? inquired the squire, very angry as I could see. I can't speak as to that, sir. Not having seen her, her tried, said the captain. She seems a clever craft. More, I can't say. Probably, sir, you may not like your employer either, said the squire. But here Dr. Livesey cut in. Stay a bit, said he. Stay a bit. No use of such questions as that but produce ill feeling. <gasps> Such a good emote. Yeah, stay a while and listen. Listen up and stay a while. <laughs> no use of such questions as that, but to produce ill feeling. The captain had said too much or has said too little, and I'm bound to say that I require an explanation of his words. You don't, you say, like this cruise? Now why? I was engaged, sir. An okay guy. Welcome in. I hope you're doing well tonight. Stay a while and listen. Um, on what we call sealed orders to sail this ship for that gentleman where he should bid me, said the captain. So far, so good. But now I find that every man before the mast knows more than I do. I don't call that fair now, do I? No, said Dr. Lipsy. I don't. Next, the captain. Next, said the captain, I learn we are going after treasure. I hear it from my own hands, mind you. Now, treasure is ticklish work. Hee hee hee. Hee hee hee. I'm tickling. It's a ticklish work. Hee hee. We're going for treasure. Hee 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 hee. I'm, I'm putting my fingers up. Oh my fing fingers. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That, that was very, that was very random. I'm not smelly. You're smelly. You're the detestable doo-doo eater. You're the defiled dung 
the, the, the I, you know, all those jokes. Welcome in, Poop Slurper. I hope you're doing well today. <laughs> you can't. You can't be when you're doing that. <sighs> I hope it's clean. Oh, 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 baby. Oh. Next, I learn we are going after treasure. No treasure is ticklish work. I don't like treasure voyages on any account, and I don't like them above all when they are secret, and when, begging your pardon, Mr. Lanny, the secret has been told to the parrot. Silver's parrot, asked the squire. It's a way of speaking, said the captain. Blabbed. I mean, it's my belief that neither of you gentlemen know what you are about, but I'll tell you my way of it, life or death, and a close run. <laughs> Yay! I'm glad, I'm glad you like the meme voiceover. Um, I, 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 it's mostly the editing. The editing is is the part that I dislike doing, but you know, it's it's fun. It's how yay yay somebody discovered me through through my YouTube. The goal of my YouTube was to was to get more people to Twitch, and now more people are yay. That makes me really happy, even though you have a horrible name. But I'm glad you enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, um, more, 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 more. I think, uh, crap, I, I super lost my place. That is all clear. And I say, true enough, replied Dr. Lipsy. We take the risk, but we are not so ignorant as you believe us. Next, you say you don't like the crew. Are they not good seamen? <sighs> um, I don't like them, sir, returned Captain Smollett, and I think I should have had choosing of my own hands if you go to that. Perhaps you should, replied the doctor. My friend should perhaps have taken you along with him, but the slight, if there be one, was unintentional. And you don't like Mr. Arrow? I don't, sir. I believe he's a good seaman. But he's too free with the crew to be a good officer. A mate should keep himself to himself. Shouldn't drink with the men before the mast. Do you mean he drinks? cried the, s the squire. No, sir, replied the captain. Only that he's too familiar. He's too familiar. He's a seaman who's too familiar with the... With, with the crew. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Very, um... <laughs> yeah, you don't want good seamen to go to waste. You want all the seamen to be familiar with each other. Maybe the seamen is all... They, they drink it together? The seamen drink together. Distracted, don't get distracted, don't get distracted by semen. <sighs> I 
It was, it was a lot, it, this was written in the 1700s. It, I don't know what they called ejaculate back then. Maybe they just called it ejaculate and not semen. Yeah, emissions is good. <sighs> Person that's in your chat. Hello, welcome. Thank you for the follow. You are my favorite customer. I'm so sorry for getting super not on track and also super on say so. Okay. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you for the water. And the stretchy. Yeah, reset my brain. <laughs> oh, that's a good stretchy. <laughs> okay. Well now, and the short and long of it, Captain, asked the doctor. Tell us what you want. Well, gentlemen, are you determined to go on this cruise? Like iron, answered the squire. Very good, said the captain. Then, as you've heard me very patiently saying things that I could not prove, hear me a few words long. Few, few words more. They are putting the powder and the arms in the forehold. Now, you have a good place under the cap, and why not put them there? First point. Then you are bringing four of your own people with you. They tell me some of them are to be breath, birthed forward. And why not give them the births here beside the cabin? Second point. Any more? asked Mr. Tuani. One more, said the captain. There's been too much blabbering already. Far too much, agreed the doctor. I'll tell you what I've heard myself, continued Captain Smollett. That you have a map of an island. And there the cross is on the map to show you where treasure is, and that the island lies, and then he named the latitude and longitude exactly. I never told that, cried the squire, to a soul. The hands know it, sir, returned the captain. Livesey, that must have been you or Hawkins, cried the squire. Yeah, the whole crew is coming out of the closet. The whole, the whole crew is is gonna spend a lot of time together, being being close, being being close. All right. Well, I don't know who. Where was I? Well, gentlemen, continued the captain, I don't know who has this map, but I make it a point it shall be kept a secret from me and Mr. Arrow otherwise. Um, I would ask you to let me resign. He knew. Does he know? He knew. He knew it. I see, said the doctor. You wish us to keep this matter dark and to make a garrison of the stern part of the ship, manned with my friend's own people and provided with the arms and powder on board. In other words, you fear mutiny. Sir, 
said Captain Smollett, with no intention to take offense. I deny your right to put words into my mouth. No captain, sir, would be justified in going to sea at all if he had ground enough to say that. As for Mr. Arrow, I believe him thoroughly honest. Some of the men are the same. All may be for what I know, but I am responsible for the ship's safety and the life of every man Jack aboard her. I see things going, as I think, not quite right, and as I ask you to take certain precautions, or let me resign my berth, and that's all. Captain Smollett, begun the doctor with a smile, did you ever hear the fable of the mountain and the mouse? You'll excuse me, I dare say, but you remind me of a fable. When you came in here, I'll stake my wig. You meant more than this. Girl, bullying you is so boring that it puts me to sleep. I get, I get super sleepy when, when I think, oh, I gotta bully him again. There's nothing exciting about that. He comes in all the time asking to be bullied. <sighs> Uh, good. Suffer. Keep yawning. I'm sleepy. I woke up early for work today. And I totally wasn't late for work today. I super wasn't late. I woke up early and I super wasn't a million percent late for work. There's a lot of gay allegories because, well, when you're out at sea, when you have a career as a seaman, you don't spend a lot of time. There were rules. There were rules about having women on, on the boat. And actually, since it was a place that, like, you could be away, when you're out at sea, you're farther away from the rest of society, you know? So, it's better, it's easier to, to be gay. It's easier to be gay at sea, where no one is, is looking at you. No one's looking at you when you're in the middle of the ocean. You can't get arrested. Can't, can't get arrested for, for gay on international waters, baby. <sighs> so actually, there's a lot of historic precedent that uh, pirates were very homosexual and good for them. Those bitches gay. Really? There isn't that, that? That's cool, actually. After reading it, I might look at uh, literary analysis. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. But you are. You're so eepy. You're so eepy. You're so eepy. Um, doctor, said the captain. You are smart. And when I came in here, I meant to get discharged. I had no thought that Mr. Trelawney would hear a word. No more, I would, cried the squire. Had Livesey not been here, I should have seen you to the deuce. As it is, I have heard you. I will do as you desire, but I think the worse of you. That's as you please, sir, said the captain. You'll find I do my duty, 
And with that, he took his leave. Trewani, said the doctor, contrary to all my notions, I believe you have managed to get two honest men on board with you. That man and John Silver. Silver, if you like, cried the squire. But as for that intolerable humbug, I declare I think his conduct unmanly, unsailorly, and downright un-English. Oh, don't be, don't, can't, no, no English. We're, we're, we're American. We're American. And we're, what a name. Ayo, booba sweat. Thank you for the follow. You are my favorite customer. I wonder, I wonder what I've got under, under my, under my tits. What's under my tits? Oh, it's it's July. It's July. That means it's it's a it's a hot time. It's a hot time for 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 the boobs to do be sweating. <laughs> huh. Anyway, I hope you're ready for cozy ippy, cozy ippy, cozy ippy. Treasure Island and Fables are very much sailor stories. In their languages play amoral, abundant morality, and their attention to nautical and sailing terminology. This nautical space is filled by white lower class men with homosexual social connotations alongside a cultural and racial melting pot. Homo homo homo. I see. I see, says the relatively blind man. All right. Well, says the doctor, we shall see. When we came on deck, the man had already to take out the arms and powder, yo hoeing at their work while the captain and Mr. Arrow stood by superintending. The new arrangement was quite to my liking. The whole schooner had been overhauled, six berths had been made astern, out of what had been after part of the main hold, and this set the cabins was only joined to the gallery and forecastle by a spared passage on the port side. It had been originally meant that the captain, Mr. Arrow, Hunter, Joyce, and the doctor and the squire were to occupy these six berths. Now, Regers and I were to get two of them, and Mr. Arrow and the captain were to sleep on deck the companion, which had been enlarged on each side till you might almost have called it a roundhouse. Very low, it was still, um, of course, but there was a room to swing two hammocks, and even the mate seemed pleased with the arrangement. Even he perhaps, had been doubtful as to the crew, but that is only guess, for, as you shall hear, we had not long the benefit of his opinion. We were all hard at work, charging, changing the power and the berths, when the last man or two, the Long John, along with them, came off in a shore boat cook came up the side like a monkey for cleverness, as, and as soon as he saw what he was doing, so ho! Mates, says he, what's this? We're a changin' of powder, Jack, answers one. Why, by the powers, cried Long John, if we do, we'll miss the morning tide. My orders said the captain shortly. You may go below, my man, 
Hands will want supper. Aye, aye, sir, answered the cook, and touching his forelock, he disappeared at once in the direction of his galley. That's a good man, Captain, said the doctor. Very likely, sir, said Captain Smollett. Easy with that, men, easy. He ran on to the fellows who were shifting powder, and then suddenly observing me exclaiming the swivel, we carried amidships a long brass nine. Here, you ship's boy, he cried, out all that off with you to the cook and get some work. And then, as I was hurrying off, I heard him say quite loudly to the doctor, I'll have no favorites on my ship, and I assure you, I was quiet of the squire's way of thinking and hated the captain deeply. Hey, we're on chapter 10. Yay, I'm not tired. Hello, welcome in, hot dog bong water. I hope you're doing well tonight. I think I'm going to try for one more chapter. We can do three a night. Three a night seems to be a good... I did switch ears. I literally just switched ears. You want me to switch ears again? Meatball, meatball, put it on a sub. Lots of red sauce. And it is a ball, 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 a ball of meat. Cheesy on my weenie and a salsa on my balls. It's a classic. It's a classic. And I hope you're having a good evening. Let's talk about the water. Oh, what did I have for dinner? Oh, right. I had, uh, I haven't had ramen in a long time. Velvet Milkman 50. Thank you for the follow. You are my favorite customer. Um, I hadn't had cup noodles in a long time, so I decided, hey, tonight I'll have curry flavored cup noodles with a secret ingredient. Um, I put peanut butter in it and it tasted good. It was delicious. It's really filling though. It, I'd say it's the Italian anthem. It's definitely. <sighs> Where do I think? What do I think of when I think of Italy? I think of the Spider-Man pizza song. That's also what I think of when I think of anxiety. I think of the Spider-Man pizza song. Pepe Leaf. Pepe Leaf. Pepe Leaf. Thank you for the follow. You are my favorite customer. George Washington Carver. I am thankful for their invention of the peanut butter. The peanut butter goes in ramen. It tastes good. It tastes very good. The pepperoni. The pepperoni. You know the no one. You know the pepperoni. I, I order, I order the cheese. The ear. The ear of pizza. <gasps> Okay. Um I should have um I haven't really been keeping track. But I'm very thankful because um thanks to you, Booba Sweat. You are my two thousand five hundredth customer. Yay! I reached 2.5 on Twitch, and thank you Velvet and Hookman and Pep Leaf for, for being 2,501 and 2,502, yay! Um, it's not a huge milestone, but I am 
happy to thank you for number thank you for following me and make number go up when number go up my brain does does the happy so I appreciate it very very much um, I actually have a small plan for 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 a for a vent vent stream um, a sussy vent stream um, I received the Pocky's one chip challenge so I figure why not why not make myself suffer um, for arbitrary number stream um, so I guess next week I guess next week I'll have an arbitrary number stream all right all right all right let's do one more chapter the voyage all that night we were in a great bustle getting things stowed in their place and boatfuls of the squire's friends mr blandly and the like coming off to wish him a good voyage and a safe return he never had a night at the Admiral Benbow when I had half the work, and I was dog-tired when, a little before dawn, the boat Swain sounded his pipe, and the crew began to man the capstan bars. I might have been twice as weary, yet I would not have left the deck. All was so new and interesting to me. The brief commands, the shrill note of the whistle, the men bustling to their places in the glimmer of ship's lanterns. Now, barbecue, tip us a stave, cried one voice. The old one, cried another. Aye, aye, mates, said Long John, who was standing by with his crutch under his arm, and at once broke out in the air, and words I knew so well, fifteen men on a dead man's chest, and then the whole crew bore chorus, yo ho ho and a bottle of rum, and at the third ho drove the bars before them with a will. Even at that exciting moment, it carried me back to the old Admiral Benbow in a second, and I seemed to hear the voice of the captain piping in the chorus. But soon the anger was short up, and soon it was hanging, dripping at the bows. Soon the sails had began to draw, and land and shipping to flit by on either side and before I could lie down to snatch an hour of slumber, the Hispaniola had begun her voyage to the Isle of Treasure. Hello, Mr. President. I hope you're having a comfy evening tonight. If, if you're awake and able to, I would like you all to give a salute to Mr. President, and if you're not able to, and you're comfy, and you're sleeping, then please continue to be comfy. Peony! Oh my goodness! Hi! 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 Sleepy! Sleepy Blossom! Sleepy Blossom! Hello, Peony! Hello! Hello, Litterbugs! I'm sorry, I'm gonna make a bunch of keyboard noises. Peony, playing possum. You're super sleepy. Well, crap. I keep bump I bumped my mic. Um, it is time. I know you were playing System Shock. How was System Shock? Um, how was it? How was it? Um, I'm gonna do the also normal shout out. Um, if you don't follow Peony. What's wrong with you? Hello, Peony. 
super cracked artist, super funny, super chill to hang out with. Please follow Peony if you want to hang out uh, with both of us and get parasocial. Uh, we have little sections in the Southside Discord um, where you can come and chill and, and interact with other buds or litter bugs or, or, or just do whatever. It's a, there's lots of like watch alongs and fun shit. But you're sleepy. You have, you're having a sleepy time after system shock. Did system shock shock your system? I, I, that was, that was a horrible joke. Um, Bourbon Boy 1919 and Velpepper VT, thank you for the follow. You are my favorite customer. This is the first, I've been streaming for, or, well, not you good. <clears throat> Um, but for those who don't know, I am Bodega. Rat. Your local rodent bodeguero. And, um, I do lots of art. I do lots of, like, I like strategy games. And I also do, like, voice acting, ASMR, reading. Um, silly, silly throat meat sounds. There is meat in my throat, and it's making noise right now, and it's going, ah, ba 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 ah, ba 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 oh, this bitch won't shut up, ah, ba 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 Yay, yeah, get comfy. Do whatever self-care stuff that you need to do after, um, streaming. Either drink your water, or undrink your water, or eat some food, or uneat some food. Announcement, why did you do that twice? Mealadas. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. You are my favorite customer. I wouldn't say I'm the Wiggly Master. I just, I just really, I really like them. I enjoy the Wiggly. I love seeing those silly little guys move and be like wickle chickle yellow middle that's the best of what you are I love you egg round and center surround the center Cozy sitting in your crackling shell Vitamins and minerals in you Stream elements why are you you're announcing why why are why are you why are you saying clip? Why 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 is it saying that so many times? Hi the insanity fox, hello Stream Elements has been weird recently. You made that yay! Yay, Vel, Vel Pepper made a Wiggly! Yay! I'm so happy when somebody, um, make, makes a, a Wiggly. And I, I love, I love seeing them. I, I see them and, and my brain, my brain goes happy. And hello, wise. I hope you're having a good evening. We were, uh, reading the, the sailing time. Sailing time with seamen. See men of the sea, men, men of the sea, sea lads, sea dogs. Please. I'm I'm tempted to. Hello, Skellysian. Yeah. Eat me. I'm very eepy right now. I hope you're ready to get eepy too. Are you cozy? Cause you should get cozy. You should get cozy now. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry, what's he cooking? What was he cooking? Is is it is it the men of the sea? Are the men of the sea cooking? 
What about him? Hello, Tekken Surf. Um, but what about, uh, Connor? Co Connor? Uh, cooking clips. He's cooking, cooking, oh, that's what he, that's what they're, that's what it, Stream Elements is cooking. And hello, Jimmy. Welcome in. I hope you're having a good evening. Jimba me. Jim, Jim me. When, 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 when buds recognize each other in chat, I go, yay! Yay, friendship, yay! Um, alright. Where was I? Even at that exciting moment, it carried me back to the Admiral Benbow in a second. I seemed to hear the voice of the captain piping in the chorus. But soon the anchor was short up. Soon it was hanging, dripping the bows. Tech and surf, thank you for the follow. You are my favorite customer. Soon the sails began to draw, and the land and shipping to flit by on either side. And before I could lie down to snatch an hour of slumber, the Hispaniola had begun its voyage to the Isle of Treasure. I'm not going to relate that voyage in detail. It was fairly prosperous. The ship proved to be a good ship, and the crew were capable seamen. And the captain thoroughly understood his business. But before we came the length of Treasure Island, two or three things happened which required to be known. Mr. Arrow, first of all, turned out even worse than the captain had feared. He had no command among the men, and people did what they pleased with them, but that was by no means the worst of it, for after a day or two at sea began, yeah, they're, they're doing what they please with him. He's, he's free use. Uh, what did I say? The words come out of my mouth, and, and I instantly regret them. Um, people did what they pleased with him, but that was by no means the worst of it. I, no, don't say that, no! Uh. Um... For after a day or two at sea, he began to appear on deck with hazy eye, red cheeks, and a stuttering tongue. The way they're describing it, the way they're describing it, he's, he's, he's got, he's got eyes that are just kind of like looking into the middle distance. Maybe, maybe they had hearts in them. And, 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 and his cheeks are red. His cheeks are red. Oh, and what, what could he be doing? What activity could you possibly be doing that would make your cheeks red? He's drunk. It's, it's, he's, he's drunk. He's drunk. I think that, that's what it is. He's been drinking. And stuttering tongue and other marks of drunkenness. Time after time, he was ordered below in disgrace. Oh, they sent him down back into the dungeon in disgrace. Um, sometimes he fell and cut himself. Sometimes he lay all day long in his bunk at one side of the companion. Sometimes for a day or two, he would be almost sober and attend to his work, at least passively. In the meantime, we could never make out where he got the drink. That was the ship's mystery. 
watch him as we pleased. He could do nothing to solve it. And when we asked him to his face, he would only laugh if he were drunk. And if he were sober, deny solemnly that he never, that he ever tasted anything but water. He was not only useless as an officer and a bad influence amongst the men, but it was plain that at this rate he must soon kill himself outright, so nobody was much surprised, nor very sorry, when one dark night, um, ah oh jeez, um, when, so nobody was much surprised, nor very sorry, when one dark night, with a head sea, he disappeared entirely, and was seen no more. Overboard, said the captain. Well, gentlemen, that saves the trouble of putting him in irons. But there we were without a mate, and it was necessary, of course, to advance one of the men. The boatswain, Job Anderson, was the likeliest man aboard, and though he kept his old title, he served, in a way, as me. Mr. Trelawney had followed the sea, and his knowledge made him very useful, for he often took watch himself in easy weather, and the coxswain, his rail hands, was a careful, wily, old, experienced seaman, who could be trusted at a pinch with almost anything. He was a great confidant of Long John Silver, and so the mention of his name leads me on to speak of our ship's cook, Barbecue. His name's Barbecue, the ship's cook's name is Barbecue. They called they called him Barbecue. I mean why not? Why why not? It, it that that's what it is. That's what he is. He's the cook. Guess what I wonder what his favorite food is. I hope it's barbecue. How how much would you be able to so on an island it'd be easy to barbecue, but on a boat on a boat. I've never cooked on a boat before. I don't think Okay, I've been on, like, cruise ships, and that has tons of, like, kitchen facilities. And I've been on, like, little boats, like, like, speed boats, or, like, my parents had a friend who they would hang out with, and, and they had, like, the tiniest little... Like, it was a boat meant for, like, four people. It was the size of a car. That's a good way to describe it. It was a boat that was, like, the size of a normal car. A four-person car. A sedan. That's what they're called. It was a, a boat that was a sedan. And and they, they, they had parties of, like, 15 people on that boat. I don't know how the hell that happened. Um, good parties. Um, very crowded. Yeah, he was good at smoking meat. But that's why he's called barbecue. Um. Aboard ship, he carried his crutch by a lanyard round his neck to have both hands as free as possible. It was something to see him wedge the foot of the crutch against the bulkhead, and it propped against it, yielding to every moment of the ship. Get on with his cooking like someone safe ashore. Still, more strange was it to see him, in the heaviest of weather, cross the deck. He had a line or two rigged up to help him across the widest space, Long John's earrings, they were called, and he would hand himself from one place to another, now using the crutch, now trailing it alongside by the lanyard, 
as quickly as another man could walk, yet some of the men who had sailed with him before expressed their pity to see him so reduced. He's no common man, Barbecue, said the coxswain to me. He had good schooling in his youth, days, and can speak like a book when so minded, and brave, a lion's nothing, alongside of Long John. I've seen him grapple four and knock their heads together, hen unharmed. All the crew respected and even obeyed him. He had a way of talking to each and doing everybody some particular service. To me, he was unweariedly kind and always glad to see me in the galley, which he kept as clean as a new pin, and the dishes hanging up, burnished, and his parrot in a cage in one corner. Come away, Hawkins, he would say. Come and have a yarn with John. Nobody more welcome than yourself, my son. Sit down and hear the news. Here's Captain Flint. I call my parrot Captain Flint after a famous buccaneer. Here's Captain Flint predicting success to our voyage. Wasn't you, Captain? And the parrot would say with great rapidity, pieces of eight, pieces of eight, pieces of eight, till you wondered that it was not out of breath, or till John threw his handkerchief over the cage. Every pirate is an yeah, the animal mascot. Every animal, everybody needs an animal mascot. Why not? Why not? Why? Why shouldn't everybody have an animal mascot? It, it it's fun. It's it's for funsies. <laughs> animals, animals. Hmm. Now that bird, he would say, is maybe two hundred years old, Hawkins. They live forever, mostly, and if anybody's seen more wickedness, it must be the devil himself. She sailed with England, the great Captain England, the pirate. She's been at Madagascar, and at Malabar, and Suriname, and Providence, and Portobello, she was at the fishing, up the wrecked plate ships. It's there she learned pieces of eight, and little wonder, 350,000 of them, Hawkins. She was at the boarding of the victory of the Indies out of Goa. She was, and to look at her, you would think she was a baby, but you smelt powder, didn't you, Captain? Stand by to go about it. A parrot would scream. Ah, oh, she's a handsome craft, she is, the cook would say, and give her sugar from his pocket. And then the bird would peck at the bars and swear stray on, passing belief for wickedness. There, John would add, you can't touch pitch and not be mucked, lad. Here's this poor old innocent bird of mine, swearing blue fire, and none the wiser, you may lay to that. She would, she would swear the same, in a manner of speaking, before Chaplain, and John would touch his forelock with a solemn way he had, that had made me think he was the best of men. Hello, Lucha Ace. Yeah, thank you for coming to hang out. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna probably end after this chapter, though. Because, because it's very warm. It's very warm, and I have the AC off. There's a little bit more of a chapter to go, though. In the meantime, the squire and Captain Smollett were still on pretty distant terms with one another. Oh no. Oh. I 
think I think there's fireworks going off in the distance. No, it's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. Unless it, I don't think it's a gunfight. It could be a gunfight, but it's probably fireworks. No, I thought they wouldn't do it tonight. Is it super loud? I hope it's not disturbing you guys that much. Rain, noisy, yeah. Pirate ship cannons. They're in a fight right now. In the meantime, the squire and Captain Smollett were still on pretty distant terms with one another. The squire made no bones about the matter. He despised the captain, and the captain on his part never spoke, but when he was spoken to, and then sharp and short and dry, and not a word wasted. He owned, when driven into a corner, that he seemed to have been wrong about the crew, and some of them were as brisk as he wanted to see, and all had behaved fairly well. As for the ship, he had taken a downright fancy to her. She'll lie a point nearer to the wind than a man has the right to expect of his own married wife, sir. But, he would add, all I say is we're not home again, and I don't like the cruise. The squire, at this, would turn away and march up and down the deck, chin in air. Trifle more, that man, he would say, and I shall explode. We had some heavy weather, which only proved the qualities of the Hispaniola. Every man on board seemed well content that they must have been hard to please if they had been otherwise, for it is my belief there was never a ship's company so spoiled since Noah put to sea. Double grog was going on the least excuse. There was duff on odd days, for instance, if the squire heard it was any man's birthday, and always a barrel of apples standing broached in the waist for anyone to help him that had a fancy. Never knew good comes of it yet, the captain said to Dr. Livesey. Spoil or castle hands, make devils, that's my belief. But good did come of the apple barrel, and you shall hear, for if it had not been for that, we should have had no note of warnings, and might all have perished by the hand of treachery. This was how it came about. We had run up the trees to get wind of the island we were after. I am not allowed to be more plain. And now we were running down for it, with a bright lookout day and night. It was about the last day of our outward voyage, by the largest computation. Some time that night, or, at the latest, noon of the morrow, we should sight the treasure island. We were heading SSW, and had a steady breeze abeam and a quiet sea. The Hispaniola rolled steadily, dipping her bow spirit now and then with a whiff of spray. All was drawing a low and a lop. Everyone was in the bravest spirits, because we were now so near an end of the first part of our adventure. Now, just after sundown, when all my work was over, I was on my way to my berth. It occurred to me that I should like an apple. I ran on deck to watch, was all forward looking out for the island. The man at the helm was watching the luff of the sail and whistling away gently to himself, and that was the only sound 
expecting the swish of the sea against the bows and around the sides of the ship. Oh, scary, scary, scary fireworks. In I got bodily into the apple barrel and found there was scarce an apple left, but sitting down there in the dark. What with the sound of the waters and the rocking movement of the ship, I had either fallen asleep or was on that on the point of doing so when a heavy man sat down with a rather clash close by. The barrel shook as he leaned his shoulders against it, and I was just about to jump up when the man began to speak. It was Silver's voice, and before I heard a dozen words, I would not have shown myself for all the world, but lay there, trembling and listening, in the extreme of fear and curiosity, for from these dozen words, I understood that the lives of all the honest men aboard depended on me. But he's Eepy. He's Eepy. He's so Eepy. And I'm relatively Eepy. I hope. I hope the, the thing. I hope it didn't hurt that much. I didn't want there to be noise. But now there's. There's so much noise. No. It's okay. Cannon. Cannon. It's cannon. It's a cannon event. Having the fireworks go off was a cannon event. But I think I'm going to end off here as we got through two, three chapters. And I'm very eepy myself. So, get in any last redeems you want. Any last redeems. And we're gonna breathe slowly. And try to relax as much as possible. Because if you're not happy now, then you should be soon. You should super be happy soon. Thank you, Yoshi, and thank you, Lucha. someone I'm gonna read. Um, I've never read them before, um, but I know that they do good ASMR. They are currently, they are currently doing ASMR. Uh, that's why it's that. Um, what's my plan for this week? I don't have a schedule out yet. Um, I probably won't stream tomorrow. I um, am going to do more Dokapon Kingdom on Wednesday, and I might do a normal stream during the day on Wednesday, and then I'm going to probably do a normal stream on Thursday and Friday. Um, Friday, I think, is going to be another Garbage Girl Gang collab! Yay! So, 
So it's going to be with Peony, uh, who raided us previously, and with Rael too. And oh, it might be on here actually. It it might be on this channel. Um, so I gotta prepare for that. Um, and I don't have any other plans. Um, but I hope all America buds have a fun fourth filled with good food and beautiful and not scary sparky sparky boom boom have, have fireworks be like Katy Perry and and have fireworks um other than that I'll see you guys eventually in time um so let's do the raid command um oh uh, the raid message just 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 do a pirate 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 does that does that make sense does that make sense as just do ASMR raid ASMR that's good enough. That's good enough. You can post your favorite emotes. You can post a comfy emote. Um, you can do whatever you feel like doing. Just treat her better than you treat me. <sighs> yeah, there's no, there's no hype. There's no like. I don't even know what I'd put for like a hype command. I, I mean, maybe, maybe. maybe. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I was typing in the wrong place. Keyboard, 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 keyboard. I'll see you when I see you. Come on back to the bodega anytime you want. And unironically, love forever. 